Sudan, among its countries that showed remarkable progress soon after independence in 1956. This progress reflected on the livelihood aspects such as academic and scientific services. So Sudan was a leading country in the region towards development and distinction. This was attributed to the gifted presence of scholars who had participated significantly towards development and prosperity of the country, particularly investing on the human's health and well-being. The Sudan's stakeholders during that period had paid considerable and great efforts to avail and ensure healthy status for Sudanese. For that, the whole health sector, with its diverse specialties, including Sudan's Ministry of Health and Faculty of Medicine within University of Khartoum, to send their staff to the developed countries so as to obtain advanced training and higher scientific degrees, the thing that led to develop the health sector. Among its healthy staff that had been sent was Dr. Abdurrahman Salim Muhammad Noor, the lecturer at Khartoum University to obtain Master of Science degree in Microbiology from London University in 1962. Again, he had been sent to the same university to complete the PhD degree in Virology. It was not an easy job to obtain such a degree during that time, particularly in Virology, since it was a relatively new branch of science in UK. But the young Sudanese man had accepted the challenge with a great ambition and commitment. Now these six months, I rotated two months in every laboratory where viruses have been discussed and worked for. For example, I went to the trachoma laboratory, I went to the polio laboratory, I went to the uh, uh, what is called rubella laboratories and so on. But I think I was lucky in going, spending three months in the world, in the WHO, world influ uh, WHO, influenza or international influenza center in London. This was headed by Dr. H. P. Pereira. Now, Dr. Pereira was a Brazilian who was a very nice man. I spent three months with him and his technicians. They taught me and they helped me a lot in mastering the techniques of influenza. The university thought of sending me abroad again to do a PhD. The professor then in our faculty was Professor Mansour Al Hasib, Allah Yarhamu, and he was the head of the department of microbiology. Now, before that, a few months before he came, he took over, there was Professor Dunbar, who was British. And he thought that I should take virology or virus studies to do my PhD. In 1967, Dr. Salim returned to the Sudan as a PhD holder from London University. During that time, influenza Hong Kong virus was spreading in the world as an outbreak. That pandemic was the starting point and the real challenge to Dr. Salim, the one who spent years of his life searching and analyzing viruses and microbes. Then he immediately decided to reserve no efforts to control the ongoing viral circulation by studying and understanding its behaviors and nature. Dr. Salim was supported with a team of technicians who were working under his guidance. We were faced with an epidemic of respiratory disease. This was acute respiratory disease, coughing, sneezing, accompanied by tiredness, feeling tiredness, feeling fatigue. The patient cannot do any work. They cannot eat, they cannot do anything. 
It was very serious and it affected thousands and thousands of people in the Sudan. We didn't know the nature of that disease. Was it bacteria? Was it fungal? Was it viral? And if viral, was it influenza, para-influenza, respiratory syncytial virus, Newcastle disease virus, or which? Since then, Dr. Salim has started working during the day and night in cultivating the influenza virus into chicken's embryological tissues that used a cellular culture media. These culture media were brought from United Kingdom through Faculty of Veterinary Sciences within the University of Khartoum. Then he shipped these samples in addition to his initial results to the National Institute for Medical Researches in London University for further processing Amazingly, the obtained results came up with a new scientific inventory that ranked the Sudan on a distinguished scientific position. I will bring a thermos flask with my five viruses, put them on ice in a thermos flask, and please take them to the National Institute of Medical Research in London as soon as you can. Ali al Haj, I learned later, did not go to his hotel. He went to, straight from the airport to the National Institute of Medical Research in London, taking the thermos flask, giving it to Dr. Pereira himself, and then he went to his hotel. That was very crucial. I think if Ali al Haj went to have a bus and have breakfast, perhaps the viruses would have died. Taking it straight to the lab was very crucial and I think I was lucky in finding Ali al-Hajj. Five days later, Dr. Pereira sent me a telegram. He said, Dr. Salim, you have isolated a new strain of Hong Kong virus. Now, we will call it either Khartoum virus or Sudan virus or Salim virus. I will let you know what the name we give. And they kept that virus in their international or world health influenza and they gave it a number and a name. The name is influenza a slash Sudan slash five slash seventy slash H three N two. This is our Sudan virus, the first virus in medical sciences that has been isolated in the Sudan. When the WHO representative in Sudan came to know about the inventory that had been achieved by Dr. Salim, he promptly offered him his congratulations and he requested the collaboration in the field of virology and then the Sudan National Influenza Center was established in Khartoum in 1970 as a collaborative work between WHO, University of Khartoum and National Public Health Laboratory representing the Ministry of Health. WHO had provided all required tools and equipments that helped Dr. Salim to achieve his task. The center was progressively developed and became able to perform the different virological studies such as yellow fever, viral hemorrhagic fevers and others. But the cardinal feature was the accuracy and enthusiasm for influenza surveillance and monitoring on daily basis and there was a regular monthly bulletin that was submitted to WHO. I spent three months, three months in the World International WHO Influenza Center. It was headed by a Brazilian called Dr. Pereira and I worked with him for three months. He was very nice, he was a gentleman and he helped me quite a lot in studying influenza at that time. I never thought that there will be a chance for me to implement this 
study. To appreciate and to address these intensive efforts paid by Dr. Salim, the University of Khartoum had decided to send his all researches, 21 studies to University of London for review and discussion by senior specialist professors. Dr. Salim's studies have been reviewed and discussed by London University seniors and the university had decided to offer him the professor degree. Then the Sudan National Council for Researches has nominated Professor Salim as a candidate for the Republic's Golden Medal for Science, Culture and Arts and he had been offered it by the former President of the Republic, Mr. Jafar Numeri. In 2012, Sudan National Influenza Center was reactivated and its ownership had been shifted from the University of Khartoum to the National Public Health Laboratory within the Federal Ministry of Health. Again, WHO had provided the center with the required supplies. The center is currently getting the technical support from the Directorate of Epidemiology and Zoonotic Diseases within the FMOH, aiming to strengthen seasonal influenza surveillance system in the country. Recently, an advocacy workshop had been conducted in Khartoum and was attended by WHO EMRO consultants in addition to several specialists from microbiology, virology, epidemiology, internal medicine, and community medicine. According to that, three sentinel sites were selected and equipped with all required materials and tools so as to go ahead towards proper influenza surveillance system under the full responsibility of Sudan Federal Ministry of Health.